Hello, and welcome to track one. Now, you've heard today a little bit about merging hardware and software and the challenges that are going on in this area. Uh, we're going to show our first example of how we're molding this together. This is the increase sensor machine availability. Availability is always a good thing on your machine. Using condition monitoring, I am joined here by Max Dietrich. He's a product manager of Smart Data Solutions, or Data Driven Solutions, sorry. Um, and he's going to go into this in detail. He's going to talk about the monitoring box that we have and how this enables you to really gain solid benefits from this merge of hardware and software together. Without much further ado, Max, take it away. Thank you for your introduction, Patrick. Sure. So, a warm welcome from my side. Um, today, we want to talk about uh, condition monitoring and how condition monitoring can increase the um, availability for sensor and machines. Therefore, we want to go much more deeper into condition monitoring, why condition monitoring, how condition monitoring, and what are the benefits for condition monitoring. Um, after that, I want to share with you some practical examples uh, for condition monitoring for some areas of application. And before we will do the wrap up, I want to show you a possible solution how to do condition monitoring. So let's start with the topic uh, condition monitoring and challenges for the industry today. So um, there are a lot of different challenges and these are only some examples um, for you and a lot of you will know that examples. So um, there are challenges like different production quality levels or unexpected failures. And with different quality and failures, um, it's necessary to do reactive services. So you act after the quality is going down or you act after there are failures. And therefore, you need, of, co uh, of course, uh, a maintenance cost, so the maintenance cost going higher, and you need, of course, resources. And beside resources and costs, um, you will also uh, lose um, productivity, so you will get downtime. Let's come to condition monitoring and what's necessary to do condition monitoring. So first of all, we need intelligence sensors. And with this intelligence sensors, um, my colleague Benedict will show you later in another session um, what's behind sensors. Um, we need to get data out of it. And with this data, we need to generate smart data. So um, we cannot work with raw data. We need process data. We need the relevant data. And this is smart data. And with this smart data, we can Com combine it with application knowledge and we will get smart services. But smart services is not the last point. So um, it's important for the users um, that we transfer the data into the relevant information. And this information is the main benefit of condition monitoring, that we transfer data to information. So let's talk about some benefits of condition monitoring. The main benefit is that you can act need-based. So um, you can, uh, you have uh, forward-looking, you can uh, prevent failures, and with that, you can also plan your optimal time, and not only the optimal time, time for services, also you can plan the optimal scope for the services. And with that, you can also get transparent insights so um, with these insights, it's possible to act before something will happen. And of course, you can increase the availability and you can increase the performance. Let's go more in detail. Let's talk more about some application. On the slide, you, sh you will see some, some uh, examples, but that are only, uh, is only a smart part uh, of examples what is possible to solve with, with condition monitoring. At all, you can do condition monitoring everywhere where you have intelligent sensor and the relevant data to transfer it to uh, information. So we want to start with uh, application in the ports and cranes area. So there we have an example that um, we have on so-called ship-to-shore cranes LiDAR sensors, and these LiDAR sensors get contaminated 
um, because next to the sea there is a kind of salt and um, sand mixture in the air. And this mixture will also go uh, on the front screens of the sensors. The sensors get contamina contaminated and the grains get downtime. Also, a um, challenge for the services of the sensors and the cranes is the availability of the cranes. So, um, also the availability of, of the sensors itself. It's sometimes really difficult to do the services on the cranes because think about uh, ship to shore cranes, there's a high of more than 40 meters where you need to do services, for example. And so, how can it look like a solution? A solution can look like that we monitor, for example, the contamination and the temperature of some devices like that and show to the customer, okay, how long it will take until a sensor will switch off because there is too much sand, salt, and so on on the front screen. And with this information, the customer can plan efficiency, his uh, maintenance, and have there a lot of benefits because he has transparency inside in it. And we have there also a customer statement. The customer say, okay, without condition monitoring, he needs to clean each grain um, every eight weeks, and therefore he needs a half a day. So, and now he can do it need-based. And what is need-based? What is the benefit there? So he will save only for some applications that we solve 150 hours per year, so service hours per year. The potential for the complete port is roughly 4,000 maintenance hours per year. And if you calculate it with a Western Europe um, hour, service hour, then we talk about roughly half a million euro what a customer can save with condition monitoring. And there is not included the reduction of the downtime of the cranes itself. Let's come to another example. Let's talk about energy monitoring, um, compressed air. Compressed air is a cost driver, a relevant cost driver. It's really expensive. And customer wants to know, are there any leakages or where, uh, on which machine or station is compressed air used. So, and therefore we can also monitor the compressed air and show to the customer on which station, on which machine is compressed air used, how much is there used. We can calculate much more better the production cost pro machine, pro station. And we can also show if there are any leakages or if there is uh, too much usage of um, compressed air. And then we also get a customer feedback that the customer said to us, okay, it's, it's, it's great because from SICK I get the whole package. I not only get the hardware like the sensor itself or the gateway, I also get the software and the connectivity. And if I want to get it, I also get the integration of all of them. Next example is condition monitoring in the cement industry. So there we have legal regulations um, for emission measurement, and there we need to know what is the availability, and the availability needs to be more than 90, 70% of the measurement itself. So there it's really important to know how is the health status of the measurement devices. And therefore we do the monitoring of the emissions, the monitoring of the health status of the sensors, and show to the customer the availability. And with this information, the customer can do and plan his maintenance. So um, for this customer, it's really, really bad to have troubleshooting. So he wants to avoid troubleshooting. And because of that, um, he can do now with condition monitoring the reduction of unscheduled service calls. This is also a customer statement that we get already. And now I want to summarize this uh, topic, condition monitoring in the cement industry um, in the next video.
let's come to the last and to the fourth example. So now we talk about condition monitoring in tunnels. And as you can mention, it's really difficult to do uh, maintenance or services in tunnels because if you do services in tunnels, you mostly need to close the whole tunnel. And if there is any failure, it's difficult to close the tunnel, go into the tunnel, check what's going wrong. And if you need spare parts, go out of the tunnel, open the tunnel again, take the spare parts, close the tunnel and so on. So therefore, it's really important to do um, in tunnels condition monitoring that you see, okay, how is the status of the sensors and also how is the status of the, of the air? What is the air quality? And with condition monitoring, it's possible to monitor dead points, to plan not only the time for the services, also to plan the scope for the services. And with this scope, you can also plan, okay, which spare parts are necessary to uh, do uh, or to have for the maintenance. And this is also feedback that we get from the customer. In this case, um, the customer, uh, the spare parts are filters that the customer can change now the spare parts or in this case the filters database or need based. And this is a great benefit for the customer. And we have also a short a video for the topic condition monitoring in tunnels. Okay, now let's talk about a solution. How can a solution look like? So our product is uh, called monitoring box and the monitoring box has a modular approach. So we start with the connectivity. We have a standard connectivity. It's called smart service gateway. And with this smart service gateway, you have some benefits. So you have a so-called short time storage, a ring buffer that no data will get loose if there is maybe sometimes no connection. We have also a pre-processing on the gateway itself. You can connect it via LAN, via Wi-Fi, or also via mobile connection if necessary. And we have a secure data transmission from the sensor over the gateway to the cloud. And at all, it's scalable because it's pre-configured. This is a standard solution. Of course, it's also possible to use other gateways also external gateways, then of course it's customized, but it's also possible. The second part of the IoT infrastructure is the cloud service. So there we talk about our smart service sig.com and with the cloud service you get of course data security. It's an important point with server hosting in Germany, for example. We also did several penetration tests, but this should not be the topic today. If you are more interested, you will find also a kind of white paper in at sig.com uh, for the topic data security. But you will also have a long time data backup, for example. And if you don't want to have only the single solution from SIG, if you want to implement a solution in your system, in your infrastructure, it's also possible to do it via API to get the data into your system. The intelligent part of the solution is the so-called monitoring app. And the monitoring app is product or application specific. So there we select the relevant and the right data and proceed them what's important for tunnel, for ports or for other application like HGVs. It's easy uh, to plug and play and it's flexible. So there are different subscri subscription models available. So it's a software as a service business model and you can use it at the end 
um, on different devices. So we have a responsive design. You can use it on your phones, tablets, or also on your classical desktop PC. Now I want to show you in a short video how it looks like the solution to give you more insights into the topic monitoring box. Coming to the end, I want to summarize some points for condition monitoring and the monitoring box. So what's condition monitoring? What's the monitoring box? There we talk about a cloud-based condition monitoring platform, cloud-based solution where you can connect sensors and different data sources, also external data sources if necessary. Um, we have predefined monitoring apps um, so there is no specific programming knowledge necessary. You can use it on user-friendly dashboards, but you can also use it in your own system if you use an API to integrate it into that. You will get alerts, so if there is something going wrong, you get emails, for example, you get transparency inside of it, and if there is something going wrong, you can also check it out in the historical data, since when is there something wrong and what happens. At all, it's an all-in-one solution from SIG for condition monitoring. It's cloud, it's a gateway, and it's the intelligence app where we show, okay, what's necessary, which data points are relevant to monitor. I want to end up now with the last hint where you can test the monitoring box. We have there a demo, a demo for our outdoor technology center in Buchholz in the Black Forest. So just go on cloud.sig.com, um, log in with your SIG ID. If you don't have a SIG ID, just register for one and choose the monitoring box OTC demo where you can get a live access to the devices that are connected in Buchholz that you get a first feeling how it works. I want to end up now with this slide. I want to say thank you for your attention and want to hand over to Patrick again and say goodbye. Thank you very much, Max. Um, this shows a little bit of how far we've come as a company to mold these two areas together. The hardware, which we do, and in fact, you can just uh, take our hardware. We don't take it personally, uh, but there's so much more as you need it in the application. 
Um, I myself was actually on a crane in the port of Oakland and mm -hmm. got to, cl I didn't climb up, there was a little elevator there, so it would have been <laughs> difficult, uh, but it's a real pain in the butt. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the savings that you're talking about is a real yeah. thing, uh, depending on what type of machine or what type of process you're looking at. We do have a question from the chat. I forgot to mention, please type in your chat messages uh, for this track. We will be using them, unless they're really hard. No, we'll, we're gonna be using them. <laughs> so here's a good one. Okay. Um, is it possible to use the monitoring box for factory automation applications using smart sensors which provide diagnostic data? Yeah, that's, that's possible. So of course it depends on the data itself and on the interface, but in general it's possible. So we already solve a lot of factory automation uh, applications mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it depends in the end on the sensor, but it's possible to say it. Contact us basically, right? Correct. So we're not shy. Um, we, can, we can take the questions that you yeah. have um, in the chat, but also contact your local uh, SICK uh, sales partner for sure. That was a good question. So. Great. So, Max, thank you for your time. Thank you, too. And as you mentioned, there's something also coming up. A couple people uh, that are really excited about cylinder switches. Can you imagine that? This is uh, amazing. They're waiting in the side, smiling. <laughs> and we'll have them on in just a little bit, just a few minutes. So join me here for Benedict and Adrian. You're not going to want to miss this one. It's very good. Thank you.